Hello, my name is Johnny Mills and I'm a PharmD candidate at Drake University with an anticipated graduation date of 2021. Currently, I am a rotation student working in an acute care setting. I will be presenting a lightning presentation about chronic azithromycin prophylaxis and COPD exacerbation. The question I set out to answer was what are the risks of using chronic azithromycin as prophylaxis treatment for exacerbation in patients with COPD? The objectives I have for this presentation will give you a further insight on the topic. I will briefly summarize COPD exacerbations and explain how azithromycin is used for prophylaxis treatment. Then I will address adverse reactions and risks related to azithromycin use. Finally, I will discuss antibiotic resistance with prolonged azithromycin use in patients prone to COPD exacerbations. COPD exacerbation is defined as acute worsening of respiratory symptoms that result in additional therapy. The cardinal symptoms are increased dyspnea and increased sputum purulence and volume. The most common cause of exacerbation is respiratory tract infections. The strongest predictor of future exacerbation frequency in COPD patients is the number of exacerbations a patient has in a prior year. It was found that patients hospitalized for COPD exacerbation have a five-year mortality rate of about 50%, which is shocking. This image illustrates the cascade pathway for COPD exacerbation treatment according to the 2020 Gold Guideline Report. As you can see, azithromycin is used as a possible last resort. Azithromycin is recommended in patients who are former smokers and still experiencing exacerbations after using LABA, LAMA, and ICS treatment together. It has been studied and shown to reduce the number of exacerbations for patients prone to COPD exacerbations when dosed as 250 mg per day or 500 mg three times per week over a one-year period. Azithromycin is indicated to cover H. influenzae, M. cataralis, and streptococcus pneumoniae in COPD exacerbation, and although it does not cover Pseudomonas arginosa, it has been shown to interfere with colonization of Pseudomonas by inhibiting biofilm formations. Azithromycin is a cost-effective treatment which attracts a lot of providers to use it considering the expense of inhalers used for COPD exacerbation. Azithromycin has been avoided in some cases due to its risk of adverse effects. Azithromycin has been noted to cause autotoxicity in a randomized trial done in 2012 titled Azithromycin for Prevention of Exacerbations of COPD cited by the 2020 Gold Guideline Report. In the study, 142 participants, or 25%, had hearing decrement while taking azithromycin for one year compared to 110 participants, or 20%, on the placebo, with a p-value of 0.04 indicating statistical significance. Azithromycin and other macrolides have been shown to have increased risk of ventricular arrhythmias, including torsades de puentes, and should be avoided in patients with QTC prolongation. Cardiovascular risk of azithromycin was covered in two retrospective cohort studies listed in Lexicom. The first study conducted in 2012 looked at cardiovascular risk among other antibiotics including azithromycin, ciprofloxacin, levofloxacin, and amoxicillin. It was discovered that azithromycin had the highest risk and estimated 47 additional cardiovascular deaths per million courses of treatment associated in patients with higher baseline cardiovascular risk. The study noted that the results were not generalizable to the population as a whole. The second study conducted in 2014 looked at the population of U.S. veterans and displayed risk of mortality and arrhythmias on days 1 to 5 of azithromycin treatment, but not days 6 to 10. This is difficult to consider when studying long-term use of azithromycin and supports more research into azithromycin use over time. Resistance is important to consider for antibiotic stewardship. Overuse of antibiotics create a risk of resistance and threaten the community. 
A meta-analysis conducted in 2014 found that a one-year azithromycin use decreased bacteria colonization. However, patients were 2.7 times more likely to develop macrolide resistance. Evidence must still be gathered to find the effects of widespread macrolide use on community resistance patterns. The 2020 Gold Guideline report stressed that there is currently no data for efficacy and safety of chronic azithromycin to prevent COPD exacerbations beyond one year. The effects of using azithromycin beyond a one-year period are unknown. Physicians who are deciding whether to use long-term azithromycin therapy must consider adverse effects and the impact of macrolide resistance when prescribing. In summary, long-term azithromycin is approved for exacerbation prophylaxis in COPD patients according to the 2020 Gold Guideline Report. Azithromycin presents a possibility to cause adverse effects of autotoxicity, QTC prolongation, and cardiovascular risk, along with an opportunity to increase macrolide antibiotic resistance to individual patients as well as a community. More research must be conducted on long-term azithromycin use beyond one year. Initiating long-term azithromycin must be determined by prescribers on a case-to-case -case basis and used if benefits outweigh the risks. Thank you for listening and please feel free to contact me at john.mills at drake.edu if you have any questions.